this piece I call the seven deadly sins mm. of women. What an odd thing to associate women with, especially during a month where, where, when we are supposed to be celebrating them. You might be thinking. And by all means, think, I'm going to need you to use that wondrous creation trapped up in your skull and come with me on an unlikely journey of being a young woman of color in the age of today. The reason I've cho chosen this morbid theme is not that of the religious context, which is what it's very core is riddled with, but for the simple way in which we see each other. I found that there is a litany of depressing matters that all point to the suppo all supposed sin to the withered hands of women of where I'm from. It's monstrous and the patriarchy still leeches off the veins of subdued women. But we aren't merely as subdued or spiritless as one might think. I had a seat with my therapist, her clothes her smoke cloud dispersing into the brisk air. Why do people do that? Why do they minimize others? And years of oppression and weakness that I've ever felt for my fellow women crumbled off my shoulders. They are threatened because they know our power, but somewhere along the line, they just lost the reason as to why they've been treating us this way. It's the only way, I replied. What a breath of fresh air. And yet, if a 20-year-old who's been using escapism to cope with the world could realize it, surely this should be a model the people of the 21st century are using? But it isn't. Because somewhere along the line, we also forgot what we mean to the world. And yet, we are so much. It doesn't matter how you came into being a woman, whether by choice, or by birth, or chance, you are still a woman. And I'm here to tell you some relations on how the seven deadly sins aren't in fact deadly, but a part of who we are. Yes. Mm. Last. Mm. I thought I'd grab your attention with this interesting interest that I have. <laughs> what comes to mind when I mention last? Sex, lingerie, foreplay, explicit toe curling, leg crossing, lip biting. <laughs> Red, and you could feel the heat coming in from the bra, the red, or hear the clips unsnapping from the bra. That's all us, but why does it have to be a sin? In this day and age, we still have troubles coming to terms with women having a healthy sexual appetite. Yes. We're misplaced with ugly names that brand and shrink our self esteem if we feed into this animalistic desire, and if we don't, we need to let our hair down a little. Mm. Stop being such a pig. Society just can't get enough of shaving women for something men glorify each other for. Yeah. Though I'm here to tell you that you can feed into this desire yes. and whatever judgment that matters should be yours. Yes. It's natural and it happens. Even if you're not particularly interested in that type of intimacy, there's now no need to force yourself into it and no need to patronize someone else for it. Yes. Though sexual lust is far from the, at the end of things that people, we as people long for. What about work lust? Or the whimsical one lust? Women for centuries sat on their backsides and did nothing, and others, well, they were the backbone of manual labor. Some of us have it in us, the desire or the need to do something useful with ourselves, to work, and now, as we're joining the workforce, there are many more issues to be dealt with, like sexual harassment. But what are the odds, but what are those odds against finding our purpose? We have to keep up the fight that our sisters walk barefoot on thorns for. They're just different thorns. Mm. I realize that any person who sees a woman as an object of desire instead of a whole entire universe tucked inside a human being needs to re-educate themselves. She was asking for it, they say, with those clothes. I have never particularly had clothes tell me what to do. <laughs> Love ourselves. Yes. But that lust comes into our control. Mm. Even wanderlust. I'm a huge dreamer and I believe that everyone should have a dream. Something yes. they want to achieve, somewhere they want to go, something that they lust for. It gives us hope, fills us with sensual drive to continue our questionable existence. Take control of your lust. Oh, don't. 
whatever man. There are so many thoughts surrounding this sloth. It could be a beautiful thing and yet it is brandished as pitiful and gross. Like the aesthetic softness, a softness that we seek can be seen. Ever heard of depression? Of course you have. More than 300 million people are affected by it. They don't have a choice either. It's a natural phenomenon. One of the many symptoms that may affect the depressed is lethargy and catatonia. So in other words, why is sloth considered a sin when things like mental illness play such a big role in explaining things that they couldn't understand in the second century? Seeking yeah. comfort when making an effort becomes too much of a stretch. Yeah. Sometimes there isn't a particular reason for not wanting to do anything. However, depression is not something one can control. Mm -hmm. Neither is the threat of other mental and physical ailments. Mm -hmm. Indulge in the fortitude that is in rest. Building resistance against the harsh realities of this world is one of the many, one of the few luxuries. Few. Sorry. You've got it, sir. You've got it. You've got it. You've got it. Yeah. One of the many luxuries few can afford. I reckon if you've got a minute moment to spare, you better step on a mask and start marathoning, marathoning supernatural as soon as possible. Yeah. <laughs> the reason why so many people are so uncomfortable with sitting still while life flows over them like a gentle wave is because it has been demonized. We need to get over yet another hurdle of bullshit. Mm. Pride. Mm. With a culture growing and twirling around social media, pride is something that inhabits most women. From a young age, women are told to take pride in themselves. Mm. Pride in the way they look. Yes. Pride in the work. Pride in the yes. way they present themselves. And on top of all of that, women are still taught to humble themselves as much as they can. Yes. Yes. Boasting, I understand, is not such a great thing because the objective is simply to tear those around you so you can reign, reign supreme. But um, I have a lot of experience with that during family nights. <laughs> so taking pride, being proud, isn't something any woman should be ashamed of. Our race, our sisterhood, our covenant has only made it this far through the strength of the woman before us. Mm. Think, would they want you to humble yourself, shrinking so far from your potential to merely be a fly on the wall while the world continues to throw evil at our faces? After they sweated blood, shed, shed tears of pain and bled courage so that we may have the opportunity to change the world. We are the world around us. We created, we inhabit it. Being a woman should be a celebrated thing, no matter how you can get yes. anyone. Yes. You are still a part of the sisterhood that will carry the message of the generations forth. Her story, make it a damn good one. <laughs> now read, people often associate this with tall buildings, receding hairlines, and finely taken shoes. I associate it with drive. Excess read, of course, is an obsession, obsessive compulsion, which could be a result of lack of serotonin in the brain. But read, the one for more is such a beautiful thing. Women throughout history have been greedy for more. Power, decision, love, control, freedom, anger. My therapist once shared with me that memory, memories can be passed down through genetics. Sure. It was after a long winded story that she told me this, but it gave me the answer to my unwarranted anger and my behavior suddenly became clear. I have the blood, the fire and the memories of the woman who walked before I ever lived and subconsciously I might be carrying their experiences. It makes understand why there is a need for so... There is... Sorry. It makes understand why there is such a strong need for feminism, equity and a whole bunch of liberal movements. Yes. Women for years Centuries of practice have, have passion for wanting more than just a simple life. Their memories have flowed down into our genes and we should intend to honor that with every inch of fire burning within us. We are a light, the sun marking us as their as of warriors in dark flesh. My black hair I wear as a veil to the slow burial of my culture. Amen. Help your fellow women to dig to pry our globalized way out of us and show the new while the old still lives within. Mm. Gluttony. I find the sin easy to pair with sloth. 
eating disorders are more common than you might think. Binging, bulimia, the works. We associate food far too often, which is why people tend to binge or not eat at all. It's, it's, a, it's human nature to never want to experience something uncomfortable again and to seek out what makes us feel good. I remember thinking some, reading somewhere that usually people are, in, when people are in need of something, they compensate with it for something else. Usually fandom, sex, relationships, and food. Food is something that is intimate. It's something that hooks all of your senses, filling up the gaps that nothing else would. It's easy to fall into gluttony since food can't really escape you once it's in front of you. Much like alcohol. Alcoholism is a sort of gluttony. People use it to fall away from the world and indulge themselves in a different feeling. It's medicating yourself. Addiction is no one face fiend. He carries a swell of heads on his neck. People of color are more likely to get addicted and stay addicted to things because it's comforting and the bullets of the past are still ricocheting in unstable job production. Help yourself. What grows our ambitions better than a touch of envy? Mm. Of course, there are plenty of things. Hope, love, anger, danger, etc. But envy is such a righteous thing. It has you resenting the very next person or their belongings. Almost as if you know you deserve better. And you do. Women are constantly being dragged down by the media and each other that they lose sight of what something like envy could give them. Something more. Just like we envy could be the driving force into something beautiful. Be better. Not compared to anyone else, but besides yourself. Because there's always a better version of you waiting to be unlocked. Mm. And finally, wrath. Mm. I personally love the feeling that comes with the body of the word wrath. Mm. It's like a stock of power just gets released every time I read it or hear it aloud. We've lived the world at the hands of men for far too long, waiting on them, caring for them, loving them, so much so that the word rat isn't associated with women of color anymore. Unless you're a child of color, then you might have felt the chariots of fire coming down from the heavens at the hand of a mother figure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> women are told to be mild-mannered, mild-tempered, mild, 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 mild. There's nothing in our genes that qualify as mild. Amen. Our skin is tipped by the very sun. Our head, our head coiled to its tightest end. Black of the darkest cold. Eyes deep, rich brown. Our voice flutes for the next generation to hear our tune. Hands call for the finest work and shoulders broad and great for the burden of our work and lives. Our simple existence is, is wrapped in itself. It's put fear in the hearts of those who oppose us who oppose us, because we are built for excellence. We were born with fire within us, and each time someone has tried to put it out and we've emerged, our flame grows, eating away the chains of oppression, discrimination, real racism, depression, come what may. We weren't designed for a picket fence, apple pie life, barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen. Yeah. We were designed to fight, to resist every part of society that tells us yeah. the way we are isn't quite right. We were, we were built to resist the high wall of patriarchy that blemished the world today. We were not just built for wrath. We are wrath. We bring the riot with every smile. <laughs>